Good morning. I want to welcome you to worship here at Lakewood United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Mike Childs. We have Martin Spolbosky at our cracker organ. We have Helen Emick at the piano. And uh, this is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Terry Frank will be doing our worship leading. And we're just delighted that you're uh, joining us today and ask a blessing upon God and upon you uh, from God to you throughout this Advent season and leading right up to Christmas. We're going to have Christmas Eve service here at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, then Christmas Day, we're traveling to Faulkner at 1030 in the morning. We welcome you, and please come join us for that service as well. Both those folks.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love it. People watched the Bills game last night, got a few hours sleep, and you still have energy this morning. That's great. Good morning, and welcome to Lakewood United Methodist Church on this uh, Sunday before the big day of Christmas. And uh, Advent continues. We'll have the candle lighting here shortly. But my name's Terry Frank. I'm your worship leader here today. Pastor Mike Childs is here in the pulpit. We do have music today being provided by Helen Emick and, of course, Martin Swoboski. And Martin's going to be heading off tomorrow, so prayers for him for a good and safe trip to Minnesota to see his mother and other relatives. If you uh, noticed, the pew pads were being handed out so that we have a record of your being here today. Uh, I see a couple of faces, at least, that I haven't seen here in a while, so it's good to see everybody here today. On the schedule for the calendar for the week, starting today, we do have Sunday school. Uh, we resume that after a couple of uh, Sundays off. Cheryl Wallstrom is going to be teaching our youth and adult class in the library and Vanderwark room. That will be starting at 11, and the elementary class in the Ruby Harp room will be handled by Kathy Smith and Jan Mesco. Tomorrow, the Bible study group will be gathering here at 6 p.m., and I'm getting the thumbs up from Sandy Muncy. So uh, that is set on Wednesday, the 21st. The prayer gathering will be here at 1045 a.m., even if you're not here, you are welcome certainly to uh, join in spirit and pray at that time. On Thursday at 1030, the uh, Bible study group will gather here again, and that will be on the 22nd. As for Christmas and Christmas Eve, we are having the Christmas Eve service here at Lakewood United Methodist at 7 o'clock on Saturday night, the 24th, and I do want to mention, I'll be doing one of the readings that night, but we do need other readers if you're going to be here, and you are so moved or inclined, certainly we would invite you to uh, let Pastor Mike or myself know about that. There will be no uh, Christmas Day service here at Lakewood. The service will be at Faulkner United Methodist Church on uh, North Fork Street in Faulkner beginning at 10.30 on Christmas morning. The family Christmas cards can be left out in the narthex. We have baskets that are appropriately alphabetized, so you can put them in uh, with the last name, uh, the last, left, last name of the person, first left, and they'll be there for you and uh, they'll be <coughs> there through the holiday. The narthex Christmas tree is up, if you would like to share some warmth, you may add new gloves, hats, scarves, and such to its branches. That's uh, being done by the missions and Sunday school bunch. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Arlene. I would encourage you, if you could, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, head down to the Lutheran Church in Jamestown. There is a wonderful Vesper service. Thank you, Arlene. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Well, seeing none, we will move on to our Advent candle lighting, which will include verse 4, of peace, peace, peace. And if you don't have the insert with you, uh, it'll be up on the screen. I'm actually going to surprise Kyle Keller. Kyle is our acolyte. Kyle, do you want to come up and light the Advent candles today? And I'm going to lead us in uh, our reading for the day, which is entitled Joy. I'll let Kyle get up here. Use either of those lighters, and we're going to light all four candles except for the big white one. Join me in saying our reading from Isaiah 35. 
and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We light this candle as a symbol of Christ our joy. May the joyful promise of your presence, O God, make us rejoice in our hope of salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. Let us sing together, joy, joy, joy.
Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Helen. Uh, I'm the one that omitted that last verse from that last hymn, and I didn't tell anybody. I apologize. <laughs> And if you look in the hymn book, it's got a little asterisk that says optional. You know, you can leave that one out. I left it out, but I forgot to tell our musicians that I was leaving it out. Well, I have to say, um, there are lots of inserts in your bulletin. And uh, optional inserts, you know, the, the envelopes, this is a time of giving. But I don't know about you, I've, I've felt particularly overwhelmed by people suggesting I give uh, this time of year. So take it under advisement and with prayer. Um, Pauline said, you know, we have to put the pastor's envelope. I said, you people have already been so generous. We don't need more, please. But uh, she said, we have to live, give them the option. And I, I've just been so blessed. Um, this whole the last couple of months have been a real blessing, and the preparations for my trip to Israel, a tremendous blessing, and, and I can't hardly believe it's only a little over a week away now, and um, it has certainly occupied a, a big part of my uh, mind lately as I think about and study about the Holy Land, and my wife wanted me to say, and I need to say, it is an educational trip, it is not meant to be a vacation. I do get continuing education time for being there, and, and our professor, the professor who's, who's taking us around, um, he's going to have like a, uh, some kind of a battery pack with a speaker, a microphone, and we're going to carry a battery pack with a listening device, so he's going to guide us around, and he'll be talking the whole time, teaching us, and we'll be listening. Um, and learning as we go, so it is an educational. Although it is going to be great to get there and just to experience it, I believe. Um, and I've already got people saying, you're going to have to give us a, a detailed talk about your trip when you get back. And I certainly will plan to do that at some point. There are particular prayer concerns that we have in our bulletin, in the back page. Uh, for our country, for our Methodist denomination, for our conference leadership, our outgoing Bishop Mark Webb and our incoming uh, Bishop, Bishop Hector, uh, drawn a blank. Burgos. Yes, Burgos, thank you. Uh, Reverend Suzanne Block, for myself, my wife, for my travels coming up. Also, for the Finley Lake United Methodist Church and Reverend David Cook and his wife Heather, and children Ben and Grace and Nathan. And then the family of Glendine Kent for Linnea Smith as she continues to recuperate and do, do her uh, rehab. For Gail Frank, for Mark Smith, Don Polsky, Nancy Weimer, and the family of Nancy on the death of Brad. Uh, Martha Gleason, Rod Polsky, Valerie Marsh. And special remembrance to Marilyn Larson and send her a Christmas card if you think of it. Um, her address is there. Also, prayers for Val Kraft. Uh, Val's got a big decision that she is wrestling with right now. Let's take a moment and turn our hearts and our thoughts to God in a time of prayer. <clears throat> oh God, what a blessing it is to be in your house of worship and to have it all decorated so beautifully. And it's in your honor that it is decorated thus. It is a time of joy and love and celebration, a time of hope, a time of preparation, yes. And we are, many of us, busy, busy with preparation. Help us not to be too busy, God. Help us not to be so busy that we neglect to keep you center of our heart. Oh God, we think of the miracle 
of your birth. The miracle of a babe born in a manger. Not just any babe, not just any manger, but the God of the universe coming down in the flesh. God, we are amazed when we think about it. And we are humbled as we realize that you humbled yourself for our sake. As we go through this season and as we continue into Christmas, we pray uh, that you would help us to understand the miracle of this birth and the significance that could not have happened without your your participation, that it could not have happened without your willingness, that it could not have happened and would not have happened were you not the God that you are, a God of love and grace and truth and mercy and joy. So fill our hearts with joy this season. Fill our minds with with good thoughts and good dreams. God, we lift up these people that we have mentioned already. Pray for those who need comfort. Pray for those that need strength and healing. Pray for those that are making a transition or that are traveling. Guide and direct our path, our steps, our thoughts, and our words. And we lift up those who we have not listed or not mentioned yet at this time. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. My friends Bill and Debbie. Yes. friend Kim. Yes. Now God, we lift our voices. We trust these people to you and we lift our voices and our hearts. We say that prayer as you taught your own disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to turn in your brown hymnal to number 531, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Thank you.
morning scripture today comes from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 1, uh, reading verses 18 through 25. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child, she will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded and took Mary as his wife, but he did not have sexual relations with her until her son was born. And Joseph named him Jesus. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, I was looking in my new Laughter, the Best Medicine book. <clears throat> Couldn't find any specific Christmas-oriented humor, but I did find a couple related to travel. It doesn't make sense, says comedian Elaine Boozler. You're flying at 500 miles per hour, 30,000 feet in the air, and the pilot tells you to feel free to roam around the plane. But when you're on the ground taxiing to the gate at one mile per hour, he tells you to remain seated for your own safety. <laughs> Seymour Rosenberg uh, in the Spartanburg, South Carolina Herald Journal said this, Why is there mistletoe hanging over the baggage counter? Asked the airline passenger amid the holiday rush. The clerk replied, It's so you can kiss your luggage goodbye. <laughs> a little bit fearful of reading that one this morning. Oh, let us pray together, if you would join me. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. Oh God, you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. title of today's message is By the Spirit. By the Spirit. Do you take stock in your dreams? Do you even dream? The sleep scientists say that we all dream at a certain point in our night of sleep. But you only remember the dreams if they occur at a certain point in that sleep cycle. And you have to wake up at just that moment. Do you remember your dreams? Has a dream ever motivated you? I can remember a very vivid dream. Before I was ever called into ministry, I was in a large hall. I was speaking to a group of attentive people, much like yourself. And in that dream, it, it wasn't anxiety producing. It didn't raise my heart rate. It all seemed very normal and natural. And that dream came true as I went into ministry and began to preach to congregations of people. I can also remember as a child having a very vivid dream. And I remember going downstairs, telling it in detail to my parents and others that were in the room. And it was a weird dream. 
Maybe that's why I remember it. We were at a garden party at night. There were Japanese lanterns surrounding what appeared to be a large pond. And I was in a boat. And I was being chased by a gorilla. <laughs> that dream has not come true yet. <laughs> not that it won't. It might someday. I don't know. We are introduced to two miraculous events here in Matthew's Gospel. A young couple are both confronted by a new reality and are both visited in miraculous ways. Mary has a personal visit from an angel. And then she is touched by the Holy Spirit in such a way that she is impregnated. There are lots of stories in mythology and Old and New Testaments that relate miraculous conceptions. We can remember Sarah, Sarah and Abraham, who Sarah laughed when those divine guests said that she and Abraham would have a child when they returned in a year's time. We can think of Hannah, who prayed desperately for a child. So much so that when she was in the temple and she's praying and the priest thought she was touched. This woman's obviously drinking wine and it's early. You shouldn't be drinking. She says, I'm not drinking. I am desperate to have a child. Elizabeth, similar situation. Very elderly lady, but desperate for a child and then blessed. The spirit apparently has the power to open or close a womb, to make a man fertile or fallow. The spirit has that ability. So perhaps we should not be so surprised at these events that are spoken of by the prophets. We should know and understand that the spirit's power is directed by God's own hand. And the sovereign God is willing and able to move in mysterious and miraculous ways. Jesus was compelled by the Spirit after his own baptism to go into the desert for a time of testing by Satan. Stephen was moved bodily by the Spirit to interact with the Ethiopian eunuch and bring him into saving knowledge of Christ. And once done... Stephen was bodily picked up and carried to a new place of ministry, much like a mother cat might carry a kitten by the scruff of its neck and deposit him in another room. Isaiah was writing hundreds of years before Mary was even born. Joseph was not a thought yet. The two had not met. Isaiah was writing to a verge of attack by the Assyrian armies, people who indeed needed a savior. They were looking for someone to stand up to the neighborhood bullies. Someone to provide a context to the things that they were seeing and someone to rescue them from the imminent attack. They wanted, they needed a savior. Isaiah wrote these lines as preparation, Isaiah 7. The Lord sent this message to King Ahaz. Ask the Lord for a sign of confirmation. Ahaz, make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven, or as deep as the place of the dead. But King Ahaz refused, saying he did not want to test God. God, in some exasperation at this stubborn royal family, finally said, Okay, I will give you a sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And the last piece of this prediction is this, that for before the child is that old, the lands of the two kings you fear so much will both be deserted. So was it for prophecy for then, that time period, or as Matthew has done, is it prophecy of the Lord's arrival in miraculous fashion? The description fits. Mary, a virgin, not yet married, has been met by an angel, God's messenger. The bulletin is out. The alert is hitting the papers. Look, Mary, who is betrothed with Joe, she is expecting. And yet, they did not know each other. 
No in the biblical sense. Yes. No, they did not know each other. Do you get my drift? Do you catch the meaning there? Of course, the big difference between the stories of Sarah and Hannah and Elizabeth, they all had a husband involved with their miraculous conception. There were two persons dancing together to fulfill the promised miracle. It takes two to tango. And they were tangoing big time. But they had been unable to conceive until God intervened. And here is young Mary, a slip of a girl, and God was going to do a new miracle. God's spirit would be the mover in this story. God would set things in motion, and her life and our lives would never be the same. you feel a little sorry for Joseph? Do you realize his voice is never heard at all? He never speaks. He is there. He is in, intimately involved in the story, but not intimately involved with his future bride. She learns of this through a visit. An actual being comes to Mary and explains things, and she responds in those wonderful, wonderful words from Luke's Gospel, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. She submitted herself to the will of God. But poor Joe was brought in through a dream, and this is because he's trying to figure out how to divorce this woman. You know, he must love her deeply because he wants to do the just and honorable thing. He really has two options in that culture at that time. Bring her to court. Bring this whole matter to court and let them see and gossip about it and make a decision. Public humility for everybody involved, but especially for Mary. Or secondly, very quietly and discreetly in front of two witnesses only, hand her a writ of divorce that says, I'm finished with you. Our relationship is over. Joe and Mary were probably set as a match by their parents. The parents want this match to work. They want the kids to be happy. They don't expect this sudden news that upsets so many apple carts. Do you wonder about Mary's mom? I do. Does, does mom believe her? Does mom support her in this? Does mom want the whole matter just to go away? Does she say, hey, you're bringing disgrace on our family name? But truly, God was bringing grace to bear on the whole of the Hebrew people and bringing a light to the Gentiles as well, bringing a light to us. But in life, so often, the light is hard to see at first. The light may be dim or flickering. The light may be a distant star that only a few understand. Only a few astronomers even glimpse it. Only a few people are preparing for it. I imagine Mary's parents coming to speak to her, and her mom says, Mary, 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 so contrary. Go visit Cousin Elizabeth. She has a similar problem. Go see if you can help her. Keep a low profile for a while. Joseph has this powerful dream. He suddenly knows that the spirit is the mover in this story. God's hand is at work in this situation. He is not being cuckolded by some rival, but he's being given a privilege, an opportunity, an exciting chance to be the father to the father's son. To be the human man to the man who will save human humanity. What a job. What a calling. What a crisis. Who can measure up? Who can be prepared for this? Who could see this coming? Well, Isaiah did. Isaiah, who wrote, The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. And for those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. 
For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will be upon his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Joseph, a devout and godly man, did he ever read these words? Had he heard the priest read these in the temple? Did he have any inkling this would apply to him and his own son? Did he ever suspect he would be called upon to share child-rearing duties with God Almighty? Can you imagine? Was he, like most of the people, blind to the future? Did he believe these words were not current, but spoke of days gone by, days past, a different time, a different situation, but still his people? Still, speaking of the Hebrew people, and talking about the line of David, the royal lineage, the descendants of the king, his own line. But he was far from the royal palaces. Joseph, a humble carpenter, yet a father to the king. By the spirit, by the Spirit, all of this would come about. By the Spirit, he and Mary would need to trust and obey. And find a way to say, yes, Lord. Yes, I am your servant. Let it be unto us as you have said. And so they did. And so they did. Would you pray with me? Oh God, this miraculous story is one we never tire of hearing. We love the faithfulness of Mary and Joseph. We want to trust you as they did, completely. God, give us wisdom and grace to be your children and to love you fully. We ask all of this in God's name, Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know as we think about the the drama, and I thank everybody who participated last week and uh, those who coordinated everything. It was fantastic. Um, and you may have noticed we had no magi in our drama. You say, why didn't we have the magi? Well, the magi weren't there. They came later. And yet the magi have left their mark on our lives and on all of Christendom because it was their gift giving that prompts us to give gifts at this time of year. And we are certainly thankful for that legacy, for that idea. Hey, they came bringing gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh to a child. And what unusual gifts those are. Yet they were motivated from their heart to give because this child was no normal child, no ordinary child. This child was God of the universe in human form. This child was the king of kings in human form in a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And so just like those kings did, they made their pilgrimage, their journey, and they brought gifts that were significant. Uh, we bring gifts that are significant from our heart to the king of kings. And we present them in our offering plates at the back of the church. And we trust that God will use those gifts in a powerful way. And God does. And God does use them. 
Would you pray with me for our offering? Oh, Lord God, we thank you for the, the model that the Magi gave us, the, the pattern of giving to Christ so that we might have free hearts and might celebrate this Christmas season in a, in a good way. God, help us that every gift we give and every gift we receive is given with humility and love and out of joy. And we pray that they might be used for your work here and around the world. And we ask and pray it in the name of Christ Jesus, that infant king. Amen. Now we're going to uh, sing our doxology and then the song listed in our hymn, hymn book is Away in the Manger. But then I noticed this morning that Helen had put Joy to the World as a possible closing song. And I thought, today's the Sunday of Joy, so why don't we do that? Last year, last week rather, we heard the carolers, and then we joined them at the end. Uh, we're going to sing our doxology, then Away in the Manger, and then we'll close out with Joy to the World. Let us sing together.
benediction. O God of hosts, let your light shine, bringing your salvation. O come, O come, Emmanuel. That's a blessing. <laughs> That's sometimes good and sometimes bad. Ask my kids. <laughs> God bless your day today.